Hello and welcome to Lister LD1 Restoration Part uh, 15 now actually and today is going to be putting the first coat of green on the diesel tank and also I've got the silencer there and that's going to be sprayed in some heat proof black so we want to do that and also a bits of piping with the joiner for the um, upturned exhaust pipe and also I'm going to we've got piston rings in there Oh, well, nice, lovely, genuine list of uh, piston rings. And what we're going to do is, uh, I'm going to gap the rings on the on the um, engine. I brought the manual with me. We're going to gap it, and I think we're going to do some assembly to the engine. Finally, get around to assembling it, and then once it's pretty much almost assembled, we will lift me and Dad will lift it onto the trolley, and uh, we'll go from there. Trolley's at home being sorted out. I'll do a video on that I suppose when I get when I get around to it. And yeah, so uh we're going to um I think the first thing to do is probably gonna spray my uh exhaust silencer. I'm gonna spray that and give my um, thing a coat of my diesel tank a coat of green paint. So I'll make a start on the uh, silencer. Okay, here you can see I've done the um uh, exhaust silencer and also a little pipe union. I done the um, elbow a while back. So um, yeah, here it is. That's the 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 union I found in the scrap pile. And the silencer I bought, and the um, also the elbow I found in the scrap pile. If I if it doesn't work out, I'll just probably put a straight pipe. I think the elbow might make it a bit quieter again because the sound waves bounce around the elbow instead of just bouncing. I think, I don't quite know the science behind it, but it should do. And if anyone is wondering, this is the paint I am using. I don't know what it is. Plastic coat or something, I don't know. Plastic coat, I think it is. Tech paint. Wood stove. I don't know, they had, a, they had two when I bought it. I bought that at the, um, the range. Some people might know what the range is. It's like a... Don't know what it is. It's like a shop that sells everything, sort of thing. But it's not like a pound shop. Don't know how much that was. Three, three, four hundred can or something. Bought that two year ago now, I think. I uh, bought it for my Wolseley engine when I did the science on that, and not had a problem. Not, not flaked off or chipped or anything. My DK, um, I did the vaporizer and the uh, silencer. I think that gets a little bit hotter because it didn't. Blister, but I did that instead of bare metal. I did that on top of the old paint, which probably caused it to blister. I didn't prepare it. I just like took it apart and painted it. That's all I done with that. Same. So this here has all been put on to bare metal sort of thing. So hopefully it should be okay. I don't think a diesel engine gets as hot that way, but maybe if it's working, it might. But it's made the sensor look a lot better. Very nice. I'm quite pleased with it. Also. I've done the tank, so I'll show you that in a minute. As you can see, I've done the tank. Excuse the messy workbench, but I will be sorting it out before I do anything a bit more to it. But yeah, there's the um, tank. That's its first coat. Not looking too bad. As, as again, the camera hasn't really shown up its true colour, which is a bit of a bummer. But we can't do nothing about that. So maybe when I get the engine out in daylight, you'll be able to see it. Hopefully, but the artificial light's probably no artificial light's probably no good to show up the colour, but it's a really nice colour I must admit. So uh yeah, that's tool tank done. So what I'm gonna do now is I've got the list of the manual for this engine in the in the file. I'm gonna dig it out and I'm going to uh gap the rings in the bore. And the bore is actually a really good bore I think really good and it's not done a lot of work since it's been rebuilt unfortunately it's all got the cross honing in the bore and everything where it's been honed so I might just have like a little quick go over the honer just to make sure it's okay I may leave it I'll see what dad says because dad's a mechanic he'll know so I learned through him you see so so I don't know oh you see I get dad to help me when I get a bit stuck but what you do you learn from people so um yeah I think the next thing to do is I'm going to get the bore and the piston and the rings, I'm gonna go from there, hopefully it won't break any ok, we've got to touch some wood I think touch wood, I don't break any so um, yeah, let's get some rings, but first I'm gonna clean the bench off a bit ok, as you can see 
got everything laid out what I will need to gap the rings. I got piston, new rings, bore, feeler gauge, and over there are some, I don't know if you see them in the video, there you go, needle files, if I should need them or if they're already gapped. Um, that white thing there, you can see is the um, manual. This is the section we are looking at. If you are wondering, it's the Lister LD manual. If I have a look quickly. Uh, yeah, Lister instruction book and parts list air cool diesel engines patent applied for type LD. Um, if you're wondering what thing it is about the rings, it's page 15. Yeah, just page 15. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to gap the rings. The ring gap should be 8 to 20 thousandths of an inch. That's what it says in the manual. So I think I'm going to go for 8 thousandths first. I might put it 9. Set it at 9, so if you've got a bit of slack then. But 8 is the minimum, 20 thousandths is the max. It doesn't say about oversized, but that's about it. And for um, newer children, that is point. 2.0 to 0.50 of a millimetre, so that's I think that's 0.2 of a mil to 0.5 of a mil. So we're going to gap the rings. I'll show you what to do, but the camera batteries are dying, so I will uh, put your batteries in quickly. Okay, well, first thing I'm going to do is first I'm going to find a uh, on a feeler gauge, I'm going to find um, eight thousandths of an inch quickly. So that's what we got here. 10, 9, 8. Okay, yeah, 8 thousandths of an inch. See, so there's quite a, quite a small gap. So, uh, what we do is you get your ring, you uh, put it, place it in the bore, trying, of course, to be very gentle. I think you'll find it's probably best without gloves. Okay, you get your piston and use it like a plunger and just push it down the bore halfway like that. Okay, I'll take off the tripod, you'll be able to see. If we go down there, you can see the gap. You get your feeler gauge and you just place it in the gap. That's the smallest gap we got. So, this is quite bad. As you can see, it does not fit. Oh yeah, it does. Oh, you're missing it. So I can get it in the ball. There you go. Don't know if you can see that down there, but the feeler gauge does go in there. So that gap is bigger than uh, bigger than eight thousandths of an inch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you back up here on the tripod quickly. I'm going to get. Uh, I'm going to keep going over. So let's try um, nine thousandths of an inch. As long as it, if we get um, nine, let's get twenty thousandths up. Uh, Fifteen, sixteen, eighteen, nineteen. There's twenty there, right. Sorry, it's a bit long winded, it's the first time I've done it as well. And we're going to try and put 20 thousandths in there. It doesn't fit. So we know the ring gap is ideal. So you repeat that for every ring, and hopefully you should be able to find. So we know that ring is already gapped and ready to go. So I will uh, put that to one side and continue doing the rest. Okay, well, I've gapped the rings. Oh, it looks like a messy pile. And they're all about ten thousandths of an inch. We got the biggest ad was eleven and the smallest ad was about nine. So we're all very good there. So they're all within reason, reasonable gap. The bore is good and they did I checked at the top, the middle and the bottom and pretty much there was well actually I said it wasn't anything. There was no movement. So if I had a ten thou ring at the top, at the bottom is ten thou and in the middle it's about ten thou. So actually, it's not it's not too bad this bore at all. Right at the top ten thou, right at the bottom ten thou, in the middle ten thou. Try to think is ideal really. It's all good for the engine. 
it's a good news for the engine anyway so um I don't think this engine's had a lot of work. It's had a hard life as such, but never had like a lot of work. This engine used to run a very light load, where it worked, it worked in a garage, then it was sold. They went down some burying to a place called Leah Farm. And in that farm, it used to pump water, and the water pump, and obviously that was too much power for the pump, you see. So the engine just stood up. And the previous owner to the bloke I bought it off, this engine, he stripped the engine down and the exhaust port, he said he should have took a picture of it. It was, um, the exhaust port had a one eighth of an inch hole for the gases to escape. So it died through carboning up. That shows how rough these engines were, it died in the end. Through that and then the bloke bought it, stripped it down, cleaned it up and the bloke after that put it together, put new bearings in it and rings but unfortunately the rings broke so hopefully this one put new rings in it. But it had fantastic compression before I took it apart, so hopefully it should have fantastic time the rings bed in again. So what we're going to do is uh, let the rings. I'm going to put the rings on the piston. I suppose we might as well put the engine together. I can't see why not. So we're going to put the engine together. I suppose we'll start making a start on putting the engine together. Okay, thank you. Okay. Well, after a bit of a struggle, I suppose. Nothing to do with the rings didn't fit there on, it's just there's so many, you quite, well it's quite a nervous moment really, because you don't want to break them. Because they are only cast iron at the end of the day, believe it or not. Well I think the first, the four grey wings rings are cast iron, top one I think is a steel, or actually I think it's chrome plated. It says in the list of manual. It says on the list of manual they are um, all marked top. I think that's if you get new old stock ones they are marked top, but because these are um, brand new ones they aren't, they just like, they got a tapered edge on them, on both sides instead of just the one, because we go over to this to manual quickly, this out of the way, you can sort of see it's tapered, but these ones here aren't marked top, so um, yeah, so I don't believe um, these are uh, these aren't marked tops and go on any way round. I have looked and checked and double checked and triple checked, etc. But they aren't marked top. So as you can see, they're clean piston ring grooves or holes, roll each accepting. There's your gap settings there. Top ring is taper sided with and chrome painted. Second and third rings have tapered faces against the cylinder. These should be fitted with with the large end of the taper at the bottom. New rings are marked top on the top side. So there we go. If anyone hasn't got that information, they could pause the video, take a picture, I don't mind, but it's not mine to uh, say anything. Because it is a copyright thing, but we aren't going to go into detail about that. So yeah, there's the rings in the, there. As you can see, it's quite shiny of oil. Don't be stingy of the oil. Because when you put the engine together and fire up for the first time, oil's got to get up there. So if you oil it now, it's got time for the oil to circulate up there. So don't be stingy about oil. That's what I say. Being stingy is not good. So yeah. So the next thing to do, I think, is um, put the piston on the so, engine. As you can see, I've got the piston there. I'm going to put it on the engine. And I just look at the gudgeon pin. Everything. If you look there, I don't know if you can see that. It's got a lister marked in the, in the gudgeon pen, and it shows this engine hardly done any work because I cannot feel anything on that. No lip, no nothing. Absolutely nothing. Maybe a, no, it was nothing there. That's the, the glove. But there's absolutely nothing. And that is a really good fit in that end as well. So, this engine would either have been very well looked after apart from the coking problem, had regular oil changes, or it hasn't done a lot of work. And someone must have looked after it that way, oil wise. Which I think is very, I'm very thankful of. And you can tell it's not been replaced recently because you've got a nice, almost like oil staining there and you've got marks there. But it just shows how good it is. It may have been replaced, you don't know, but that is ideal. So hopefully it will be good for another 60 years, because this engine is 60 year old this year. 
It's his big 6-0. So this is its 60th, birth 60th birthday present from me, hopefully. So I'm going to put the piston in. So I'll start by putting the piston in and uh, then we'll put the barrel on. And I'll get back to you when it's all done. Okay, well as you can see I've got the piston on. I'm going to make you one thing, because I did put it on, well I didn't quite put it on, put the gudgeon pin through. And went poop. Because I realised something. These engine, these pistons don't go on any way. If you look on the top there, zoom in quickly, you might be able to get there. Can you see it says camshaft side? And this side here it says pattern pending, all that sort of stuff, and lister. But as you can see, I put it on the other way. And obviously, this is because this recess ain't in the middle. I think if this recess were in the middle, it wouldn't matter. Because it's there, means the injector has got to inject into that bit to affect the, um, I don't know, like the combustion. So that's like the combustion chamber as such. So um, that's why it's probably got to be uh, on that there. Obviously, I may have run the other way, but good job I did check that before I um, put it all together. But luckily, it's all on. Piece of rags there was hold the thing still, and also stop if I did drop a sir clip into the sump luckily I haven't they're both in there and they're both in there correct always check like once twice three times to make sure and the next job is um going to be with the bore on now this is be a tricky job I don't want to break any rings doing it so we're going to put it on we'll put the bore on uh, make sure you remember the little copper gasket I'll get that out the gasket set to do and we shall put the bore on Okay, what you can see here is I've got the bore on finally. It was a bit of a nerve wracking job putting the. trying to squeeze the rings because it's not like you can put a piston and compressor on it. You could if the crankcase door and the big end was all unbolted. But I didn't do that. But as you can see, it's on finally. Nothing broke. So everything went well there. So you've got all this on. It's always a bonus. So the barrel is on the engine. So start, put oil in there so that can soak down around the rings. Over time it should soak down, hopefully. Or if the rings are good, it shouldn't soak down, is what we should say. But they'll bed in and find home eventually, the rings will, after some hard work. So I've done that, then the next job will be... Um, I think the next job really you can do is... Uh, I'm probably going to put something over the top of that stop dirt going in there. But also the oil will be key for the first startup because the rings may not be that good. And for the first startup, compression will be built up with the oil acting as a temporary seal. And that first run should get the rings bedded in enough to tell me to give me enough compression for the first startup and it will only get better. Hopefully. As you can see, the flywheel's there. That's just resting on the fan, but you can see the the um, colour there. See it looks quite smart. I will uh put it on soon. I've got the old skids the engine came on down here. I'll use those to build the engine up on so they're off the ground. And the great thing about this bench is I can lower this bench to allow me to uh, um, allow me to uh, to get the engine off easily. And also I can roll the trolley up alongside and you can just slide the engine over that way just by up raising and lowering the bench to our desired requirements and we've got an engine crane as well and we've got me and dad so that's okay so um, first things first I think we can put the cylinder head on but um, well first off I'm going to see how far the piston comes up and I'm going to read up on the um, tolerances for the uh, the bump clearance Okay, well I've got the cylinder barrel on and everything. You can see it's the injector pump. And what I'm going to do is what's called calibrating the fuel pump. It's on um, in the manual. Uh, fuel equipment, page 20. If you look down to time in the fuel pump. Uh, you want item... Let's have a quick look quickly. If I can find it, I had it a minute ago and I've lost it. Here we go. Item G, prime in the fuel system. Here we go. With engine control in the run position, which is horizontally, as you can see, 
uh, and a ten, pound, ten thousandths of an inch feeler gauge inserted as shown in figure 11. Uh, engine control, run position, the rack must be against the fuel body as you can see adjustment quadrant on the engine control is altered with the new pump fitted etc. So basically what it's saying is that's um, start, run, stop. So run position is horizontal as is on here on my engine as you can see. I want to put a 10 thou feeler gauge between the stop and there and the line on the fuel pump body and that should be right on the edge of the pump and that there will calibrate the pump with the engine. I will explain as I do it. So what we do is we go over here we put a 10 thou feeler gauge like that in there like that as you can see if I zoom in to the pump I don't know if you can see that, nope get a bit higher on the tripod you may just see it, it's a very tricky thing to see I don't know if you can just see that line if I zoom out and get closer you might be able to see it camera to focus see that line? that line's got to be about right in line with the pump body when I put a 10 power feeder gauge in so what we do is you can as you can't see it very well I'll show you what you do 10 thou feeler gauge that's there, it's not very clear to see on the camera you put that in there and I move this quadrant, slacken up this bolt here which I have done you just got to move the pump quadrant which is a bit tight I'll see if I can do that quickly, move it get it moving Oop, there we go here is your snap now, ideal and you want to just set it so that when a 10th hour feeler gauge is put into that there we can just pull it back a bit, oop, a bit too much a bit messed so very, there we go and you just tighten up that lock nut as shown, so if I get my ratchet quickly here and you let go and that's it that's it there and you tighten up that nut and that there will um, allow the uh, that will time all the governor and everything up with the engine so the governor, when the governor opens up it will align it with the thing. So that's all done. So i just knock that up a bit more. Right, and what also is a good idea, I don't know if this will work, but you know, as you look on YouTube, you've got people slowing down their engines by doing that, holding the thing near the stop. What I'm thinking is, at rallies, when this thing the rings all bedded in, undo this again, mark where it is now, with a bit of black paint or something, small so you won't notice I'll move it towards the stop a bit more, move it that way the quadrant, quadrant, quadrant and that there will hold it more near the stop and then hopefully it might just idle a bit more and get a bit hotter as long as it don't get too hot and it burn cleaner but running slower and I'll use less diesel as well if I'm running a load I'll put it back to normal so uh, yeah that's that done and I'd like to say it's a good night's progress and um, I'd like to say thanks for watching and stay tuned for part 16. So, uh, thanks for watching.